Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, buongiorno a tutti. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm Sara, I'm the person in charge of uh, export and marketing at Mauro Molino. Uh, first of all, uh, we would like to thank you for joining us today at this uh, chat about uh, our new 2018 Barolos. Um, as we all know, the traveling situation has become quite difficult in the last two years and COVID forced us to find new ways of communication uh, with all our supporters. Um, so last year we proposed this online format uh, to bring together all our friends and partners and it was just great. So here we go again. Uh, this is a very important and exciting moment for us. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can just write them in the, in the chat and uh, we will answer at the end of our meeting. So now I leave the stage to Fabio, uh, who will give you some information about the company. Okay, grazie Sara. Buongiorno and uh, welcome again to all of you. My name is Fabio and together with my colleague Sara, I'm the person in charge for the export market here at Mauro Molino. Uh, I know many of you already know very well our company and uh, its history, but uh, let me give you just a few information about uh, the winery for those who are not familiar with us yet. Marmolino is a family and boutique estate uh, established in 1982 and now is run by the second generation of the Molino family, so Matteo and Martina, the two sons of Mauro. Um, we are located in La Morra, which is uh, one of the most important municipalities for the production of Barolo and actually is in the heart of the Barolo area. Uh, as you can imagine, and uh, also this is the reason why we are here today, our production is focused on the Biolo Grey, the most important variety here in Lange. But beside it, uh, we also strongly believe uh, and, uh, and love uh, other uh, very important varieties, such as the Barbera, uh, the Dolcetto, or uh, the White Arnaise. Uh, furthermore, as Sara already said, uh, uh, many of you were not able to travel last year, so I seized this opportunity to inform you that we just uh, finished a few months ago our new tasting room. Uh, it was a big step for us, uh, since it was a very important project for Martin and Matteo. A project that they had in mind uh, for, uh, for several years, and now this, uh, this, uh, this project has become reality. So obviously we very look forward to having you here as soon as possible, all of you and to share a glass of barrel together. Um, but let's go to the point, and uh, I leave the floor to Matteo and Martina Molino for the new uh, Barolo 2018 presentation. And, but first, um, I'm happy to introduce our special guest, uh, Josh Eisenhower, sommelier and the wine director of Villa La Madonna here in uh, Monastero Bolmida, who will uh, help us uh, for this great occasion. So Josh, thank you for, for being here today. It's an honor, and the stage is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you to the Molino family for having me. My name is Josh Eisenhower, and I am an American sommelier based here in Piemonte. Um, I began working with Italian wines in New York City in 2007. Um, after working at a few different restaurants, I met my wife, uh, Sara, who uh, is from Piemonte as well, and I relocated here in 2013. Uh, initially working as a sommelier uh, for the Alciati family, for the restaurants Guido and uh, Guido di Costiglione. And uh, as Fabio uh, mentioned uh, recently, um, uh, transitioned to uh, making, um, I run a restaurant, a, a small boutique hotel called Villa La Madonna, and I'm a the sommelier and wine director as well. Uh, additionally, uh, I'm a good friend of uh, the Molino family and a big fan of the wines, and I'm really looking forward to the opportunity uh, to discovering their newest releases when it comes to Barolo um with you this evening so um that'll be very exciting so thank you thank you very much for having me um let's let's get down to it let's start talking about uh, the 2018 uh vintage um i could could begin with you martina if that's okay um how, how would you define 2018 as a year um and uh, what were its characteristics and how does it feel to to be uh releasing this wine finally to the public Thanks, Josh, for the introduction. So this is Martina Molino, co-owner with my brother, Matteo of Mauro Molino Winery. So uh, actually, it's, it's great to be here tonight, and it's a great pleasure to finally present the 2018 vintage. We are very happy about that. 
Uh, I mean, the release of a new vintage is always uh, a challenging moment because uh, it's very uh, good, but at the same time, I'm feeling a kind of an emotional tension. So because uh, it's the first time that we're going to share our wines uh, with, uh, with our customers and friends and uh, show them the hard work that there is behind uh, this production. So uh, before this presentation, uh, me and my brother Matteo um, have uh, passed many days uh, with tasting the new vintage 2018 of Barolos. We share uh, the ideas uh, and thoughts, and we read it also again the Harvest book of the 2018 vintage. We actually agree that in the 2018 vintage for Barolo, it's been a cool climate vintage and uh, that all the Barolos in this vintage are very well balanced. Um, this is also due to the season, the, the, the season that has been very balanced all over. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, what uh, characterizes actually the vintage 2018 is definitely the elegance of the wine. Um, we can feel it in terms of aromaticity. So all the wine have a great expression of fresh, fresh fruits, fresh flowers. And uh, in the palate, we can appreciate more the deepness and the complexity. I'm very amazed by the finesse of the tannin. So, I mean, the tannin are there, but are very, very refined. And um, that's why also we can say that the 2018, it's been very gentle and very elegant style vintage. Uh, we are very satisfied by the results of this year, especially as a Lamorese producer. No? I think uh, this um, vintage has really enhanced the characteristic of the Lamorese style wine. And uh, that's a great satisfaction. Hmm. Okay, very, very interesting. I'm, I'm getting very excited to taste. Um, I, I know, Martina, that uh, you and Matteo, for the last few vintages, have kind of taken one word, an adjective, to summarize or define the vintage. Um, what would be that word? How would you, if you could summarize in one word the 2018 vintage, what would that be? Yes, in fact, it's a kind of a game that we, we have done in the last uh, vintages to try to find uh, a word to describe uh, the vintage itself. <laughs> it's not easy because, uh, I mean, find just one word uh, is an easy, not, it's not an easy task. But uh, what uh, came out this year is actually the adjective purity. Because I think uh, the, um, this vintage, the 2018 vintage, really uh, underlined the characteristic of the, pur the purity of the Nebbiolo and also the classicism, classicism of the Lange Nebbiolo, the Nebbiolo variety. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the, the word that we, we choose for this vintage. Okay, purity, perfect. Um, Matteo, speaking about 2018, um, could you elaborate a little bit more, talk about your experience in the vineyard during the 2018 growing season? What, what was it like? Uh, yes, co of course. So first of all, I, everyone, I'm Matteo, I'm winemaker and uh, co-owner at Mauro Molino. Yeah, if, uh, if we talk about the, the, the season in 2018, we can, uh, we can say, as Martina told before, that uh, balance was really uh, what we saw during all the season. The winter started with uh, um, a lot of snow and quite cold temperature, and it was extremely important because it, you, you have to consider that we arrived from 2017, it was, was very warm and very dry. So to have a lot of snow was extremely important for the, uh, the water reserve of the soil. The, the spring was characterized by a quite cool temperature and a good amount of, of rain too. Uh, we were quite lucky because budding was not too early. So also we have no problem of frost at all. So that, that was very good in, uh, in the last years. Uh, we had it, for example, in 17, few, few problems. 18 was absolutely perfect for, uh, for that. And um, after, during the summer, start really the moment that characterized 18 because the month of June and, um, and July were very, very mild. We had, uh, we had uh, like a quite uh, dry summer, not too rainy, but extremely, extremely mild temperature, not too hot. The average temperature in June was like 23, 24 degrees and growing to July and August to 26, 27 degree uh, medium maximum. And it was extremely important for the maturation of the grapes because uh, you have to imagine with that uh, when the temperature is too hot, maybe all are gonna stop to mature the grapes. And so can have a few days 
that the, the plant doesn't work. But if uh, the plant, uh, if the vine is, uh, is in a perfect uh, situation of temperature, the plant is working for the maturation of the grape. And so the, the maturation is becoming very, very long and very, very slow. So it is very important for the aromaticity, for the deepness and for the freshness of the wine. Uh, since September, we saw um, a, a different temperature between day and night, so that the night were much cooler, and the day also very dry and warm. So it uh, it uh, it was um, very balanced to the harvest. The harvest was at the beginning of October. We started with Brico Luciani on October sixth, and sixth, uh, and uh, we finish uh, with Gallinotto and La Serra on October tenth. So the time of harvest for Barolo in Italy was quite short. And this why, because the, 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 the maturation before was very, very slow and very well done. So at the end, it was not too necess necessary to wait too many times since um, the low altitude vineyard as Brico Luciani and Conca and the high altitude vineyard as Gallinotto and La Serra. So uh, of course, we can finally say that uh, Gallinotto was very, very elegant and very pleasant. Okay, well, that's that's really interesting to have that insight, Matteo. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, will move uh, to the tasting portion of the presentation, so we'll actually be tasting the wines. But before we do, I would just like to offer a little context uh, for the wines that we'll be tasting this evening. So we are joining you tonight live from La Mora. Um, La Mora is where the Molinos family, the majority of their holdings are located, and their wines, uh, for me, very much express what I think of as La Mora de Barolo. So. What does that mean? What can we expect from the wines? Uh, let's say Barolo from La Mora in general uh, tends to have a superior elegance, um, tends to be more floral, uh, more graceful. The tannins can be a little less aggressive. If we're thinking about the Barolo zone and we think about areas like Cerro Lunga d'Alba, Monforte d'Alba, La Morese Barolo is very unique. Um, and so that's kind of a hallmark of this, this area. And Matteo, as the winemaker, really embraces that style. So. Um, that's, that's what we can expect a little bit from, from the estate and from the wines tonight. Um, let's, let's, let's try some wine. Uh, Martina, I'll, I'll pass it back to you and we'll talk about our first wine this evening. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, sure. So let's move to the funniest part uh, of the present. <laughs> <laughs> so we start uh, with the classic Barolo in 2018. So classic Barolo for, uh, for us uh, represent uh, really our ambassador. So it's, it's our business card is uh, in fact uh, a Barolo that perfectly represents also the style of our winemaking. And is really uh, la morrese and elegant in style. So for this uh, classic Barolo, we actually uh, use three different plots. Uh, the majority of them are located in the La Morra area. So we do have uh, um, a parcel that we use in the Annunciata MGA. Uh, Annunciata is basically very close to our winery, so we are in the lower part of La Morra, um, about 240 meters elevation wise. And uh, this is really the part uh, of the vineyard that gives more the elegance uh, to the wine and the softness. The second vineyard that we use for the classic Barolo is in the higher part of La Morra. So in the area called Berry. So Berry is a completely different area compared to Annunciata. Uh, in Berry, generally speaking, uh, we have a cooler microclimate. So it's much more breezy. There is a good switch of temperature between day and night. And um, in this case, uh, Berry uh, gives to the wine much more the intensity in terms of aromaticity. We do feel more like the eucalypto, the herbs, notes, uh, and the freshness. In that case, it's really Berry that makes the difference. And then the last but not least vineyard that we use is actually Perno. Perno is an MGA in the Montfort d'Alba territory. For us, uh, the Perno area represents the minority of the total of the volume, is about 30%. The rest is in La Morra. For the classic Barolo, we have chosen to uh, age it in big barrels. So um, the, um, the aging is actually for 18 months, all in used big barrels. 
uh, and the maceration is a two weeks time. Um, so actually, I, I just want, want to point it out that uh, to me, the classic Barolo is growing every year in terms of quality. This is also due to the age of the plants that now is between 25 and 45 years old. And uh, that gives up much more structure and complexity. So I'm very, very proud also on the results about the 2018 vintage. But uh, Josh, I'm very curious to know what do you think about this wine and uh, how, how you feel uh, like about this wine. Yeah, I'm very curious to, to taste it. I was uh, just smelling it as you were talking. And um, the nose is um, very, very elegant. So it's uh, like a lot of dried flowers, um, kind of a, like a potpourri sensation. Very, very, very floral. There is this kind of gentle, like um, almost like a menthol quality to it, which is really, really nice. Uh, right away, uh, first impression is um, you feel that, that the season was slightly cooler, perhaps, because it doesn't have this exuberant fruity nose. It, in terms of fruit on the nose, it, it feels quite restrained um, and really interesting. I'm, happy, I'm really happy to taste. Let's see. <laughs> mm. Yeah, on the, on the palate. Um, I can I can definitely con confirm that restraint. It's it's more towards the herbal eucalyptus, like you said, Martina. This kind of um, yeah, kind of green minty sensation. Um, the the tannin is one of the things that strikes me the most because uh, it is not an aggressive tannin, but it is. You know, we're still we're still talking about Nebbiolo. It still has this persistent finish, um, and it's it's very very unique. Uh, just tasting it now like that, this tannin that is present without being assertive. Uh, in terms of structure, talking again about structure, acidity to me feels buoyant, really, really pleasurable as, as a Barolo drinker. That's something I want in, in Barolo wine and that's certainly uh, present here. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's lovely. And it's a wine that I would imagine is gonna be at the beginning of its life now, um, but still offering a lot of pleasure right now. And uh, yeah, presumably quite a long life ahead of it. So and I don't know, Martina, what the, what, what I'm saying makes sense, I hope. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I agree 100%. So I, I like really the, the freshness on the nose and also, uh, as you said, the, the silkiness of the tanning. I mean, the tanning are there, but they are very, very refined, very soft. So it makes this wine very approachable at the moment as well. So it's very, it's very pleasant. So thank you so much, Josh. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasant, but, but still offering that complexity that, you know, we desire uh, from Barolo wine. So... Uh, yeah, it's, it's tasting again now. That's really um, the thing that is staying with me the most is I don't remember a recent Barolo vintage that had a tannin quite like this. And until you, until you taste it, it's, it's difficult to describe. Um, so yeah, um, lovely, lovely, delicious. Uh, shall um, we move on to the next wine, Matteo? Would you like to drink? Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, start to talk about the single vineyard. I mean, uh, um... Our single vineyard, uh, first of all, are four different single vineyards, Gallinotto, Bricco Luciani, La Serra, and Cocca. Uh, what characterizes our single vineyard is that our all four make in La Morra commune because we strongly believe in the La Morra uh, potential, in the La Morra characteristic, and we grow in this territory. So uh, the elegance, uh, the deepness, the freshness is, uh, is, are, are very, very important for us. The first uh, that um, we're going to describe is the Barolo Gallinotto. I mean, Gallinotto is a single vineyard located in the southwest side of La Morra uh, with a very high elevation. It's the vineyard you see on the picture. Uh, the elevation of Gallinotto is uh, um, 380 meters altitude. And um, our father bought uh, the first vineyard in Gallinotto uh, in the middle of the 90s. And uh, we started to make Galinotto since 2001, was the first vintage. Uh, what characterized Galinotto is really the altitude. And um, you have to imagine that uh, this vineyard is at the border of La Morra uh, commune and is just in front to the mountain. I mean, uh, if, uh, if, if we go to this vineyard, just in front of us, we have quite high altitude. Uh, um, a mountain, and uh, from the mountain, there is nothing that repairs from the wind to the vineyard. So during the, the night, especially before harvest, uh, this vineyard has this very cool, very cold breeze that really get a lot of freshness, a lot of intensity, a lot of uh, great uh, nose at uh, this wine. Uh, 
And this is really what characterized the, the vineyard. Um, Galinotto was uh, picked on uh, um, October 10th in 18, uh, after is, uh, the, the two weeks of maceration contact uh, with uh, the skin. And after that, uh, we aged uh, the, this barrel for 18 months, part in big barrel and part in music barrel. Mm -hmm. So, of course, in, in 18 is really a vineyard that exalts a lot of freshness and the purity of, uh, of, uh, the, of, uh, of the Barolo. And it's a, it's a vineyard that is, uh, is becoming always more and more important for us. Also because with uh, this climate change and much warmer temperature that we, that we, we saw in, in the last years, Galinotto that is high altitude is going to get a very good freshness. This is very, very important. But please, Josh, so you, we can taste together. I, it would be my pleasure. Um, mm, yeah, smelling, so smelling the wine uh, right away, uh, some characteristics uh, remind me to a certain extent of uh, the Barolo Classico, so that, that freshness, that kind of elegant menthol. Here I get a, a slightly touch bit more fruit, maybe a little bit like bright cherry on the nose. Mm. Yeah, I confirmed on the palate, very, very, very fresh. Um, the tannin here, as opposed to the Barolo Classico, it's, it's a little more assertive, maybe you feel it a little bit more. The acidity, I, I have the impression that the acidity is, the point is slightly higher. Um, is that the case, Matteo? Is, was the acid higher in, uh, in 2018, or was that just in my opinion? Uh, the, the, the acidity, yeah, in, in, in some cases, Galinotto is a little bit higher than other vintage, but what really characterized for me the freshness of 18 is really the climate. So the, the climate was very, very cool and get a lot of freshness of the grapes. I mean, the grapes uh, were uh, had, had no oxidation at all when we picked it, were extremely, extremely fresh. And uh, it, uh, it, all the, all the barolos maintain a very, very good freshness to the, um, the aging. This characterizes a lot of the pressure of this wine, I think. Yeah, you, you feel that a lot. And um, that also makes it very, very pleasurable to drink right now. Yeah, also because you feel also the nose. I mean, it's not only the mouth, but also, also the nose is very fresh. Mm. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, Matteo, is it, is, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have reduced the production of this vineyard significantly recently. Is, is, that, is that the case? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. We, we decided to reduce the quantity of Galinotto because uh, we, we, make, uh, uh, we normally made Galinotto from three small vineyards in AGA, in AGA Barry, Barry and Gia. Yeah. Uh, and we decided to, to start to use just the two best, best exposure and oldest vineyard from this, uh, this dimension, uh, just to uh, grow the quality of Galinotto and bring Galinotto at the same level as Bricoluciani and La Serra. And the other reason is also to uh, grow the quality of Barolo Classico, because the third vineyard we use in the past for Galinotto, we are using now for Barolo Classico. Uh, this is also uh, very important, just to get more freshness to the Barolo Classico. Eh, because uh, Galinotto is higher, so more portion of, uh, more part of uh, Galinotto in Barolo Classico or Berry in, in Barolo Classico get more freshness and a more uh, complexity to the, to the Barolo. This is true. Thanks, uh, Josh. No, that, that's interesting because um, I've, I've had the opportunity to uh, taste your wines frequently over the last, um, I won't say how many years, and uh, it's interesting to taste that shift in personality with the, with the classic where you have more of the Barolo from Berry and, and you have this freshness and to see the Galinotto take on more concentration. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's really, really interesting and, and both really delicious wines so far. So thank you, Matteo. Um, I guess we can move to the next single vineyard now and Martina, I'll let you take it away. Yes, of course. So now let's move to the other single vineyard, which is actually Bricolciani. So uh, this is one of the most important uh, single vineyard for us. So Bricoluciani is a very, very small plot. So we are talking about less than an hectare size and uh, is uh, actually um, a vineyard that, as you can see from the picture, is in front of our winery. So this uh, vineyard has been basically part of the property since the beginning. So when our grandfather in the early 50s bought the property, uh, Bricoluciani was already belonging to, to that. So um, we are talking about a very old plant. Uh, so this vineyard was planted in 1971. Uh, so we are talking about 50 plus years old vines. 
Um, what I think really characterizes uh, the Bricolciani in, uh, in his style uh, of Barolo making is, uh, is really the terroir. So in this area, we have a very Lamorrese soil that is mainly marly stone soil with a small percentage of sand inside that uh, makes this wine always very, uh, very elegant and very delicate in style. Um, and uh, then I guess uh, also in, uh, in 2018, we do have this finesse again, but at the same time, a very, very nice complexity due to the age of the plants that right, right now are becoming older and older. Um, also, um, I want to say that for Bricolciani, the production is uh, just 4,400 battles per year. So we are really talking about a micro production. And in terms of aging, uh, this wine see 18 months uh, apart in big barrels and part is used barrick. Okay, uh, Martina, before uh, I get to tasting the wine, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, so I've, I've been living in Piemonte uh, for nine years, so not, not as long as you, but I have, I have noticed that slowly, slowly, it, it seems that the, the climate is, is starting to change here in a very real, real way. Um, I'd like to know specifically talking about this wine, about Brico Luciani, how has the changing climate here in Piemonte affected this wine? Yeah, that's a very, very interesting question, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's actually uh, obvious that the climate has been changing quite, uh, quite a bit in the last decades or so. Um, what actually we are seeing, uh, more as, as Matteo said, that uh, um, the um, higher vineyards and the cooler climate vineyards are taking uh, a lot of benefits from, from, from this climate change because they are performing in a better way. Um, we can say, though, that also in Bricolciani, there is kind of the same case. In this case, it's not really due to the altitude because we are in the lower part of La Morra. But what makes a huge difference in Bricoluciani is the exposure of the vineyard. So this vineyard is actually a, a southeast exposed vineyard. So it's basically a vineyard that is kissed by, by the sun uh, from the morning and not from the one in the afternoon. So uh, this sun doesn't burn at all the grapes. And uh, that's why I think uh, also the Bricoluciani in the last years uh, uh, is, uh, is performing very well. So it's, um, it's, really, it's really beautiful, uh, the, the performers are also due to this uh, uh, different exposure that maybe was a little bit uh, uh, less uh, uh, expressive in the cooler uh, years, but more, more right now. But uh, yeah, so let's, let's try together the wine. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's interesting to hear you talk about how in a short period of time things have, have changed um, so much. So we'll get maybe talk a little bit more about that later, but let's taste the Brico Luciani now. Yeah, sure. Right away on the nose, um, you, you feel a completely different fingerprint. So whereas the first two wines were very, very floral, very restrained, this wine, although it, it does have this beautiful kind of floral nose, you feel a lot more fruit. Um, I feel like sensations of tobacco, which is something I didn't feel on the first wines. It feels on the nose immediately like it has a completely different personality. Yeah, tasting and tasting it, I can confirm that. Um, even though, it, as you were saying about the exposition, it's a it, written, it's a wine that's able to maintain its freshness, and there is a lot of freshness in the wine, and that's indicative of the vintage you still feel these kind of riper, rounder red fruit flavors, raspberry, cherry, um, kind of this, this gentle spice on the palate. The wine is uh, noticeably kind of more assertive, it's slightly rounder, uh, and it's so exciting uh, for me, in, in, even though uh, we talk about this all the time, to think that the same grape cultivated at just a few kilometers away can express itself so, so differently. Um, that's, that's really, really unique. Now, what, what, what are your impressions, Martina? What do you think of my... Yeah, actually, I, I, I totally agree on what you said. And, and specifically, I, I mean, it's always amazing, even for me, that I was born here on how, <laughs> how different, I mean, they, they can be uh, vineyards that are actually very close to each other. So, and uh, that's probably what really makes me want to do this job, no? because it's really the beauty of the Barolo area. And uh, I can definitely see in the Bricoluciani more this uh, sensation, as you said, of 
tobacco licorice, more complexity in general. But that's uh, also due that because the, we are growing up in terms of quality also of the vineyard. So it's, um, it's uh, absolutely important also to, to notice and underline that. And um, it's also a vintage in which I think uh, uh, I get personally different sensation on Bricruciani. So always to me, uh, Bricruciani in the past vintages have more like the fruit for the flowering notes up front. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, I can see much more like the ripe fruits or the tobacco notes, as you said. So, and I think it's uh, it's a little bit different compared to other vintages for Bricruciani. Yeah, uh, it's uh, now that you say that it's true and um... Yeah, it's really, it's really delicious, first of all. <laughs> so, I love that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, complimenti per il Bricuciani. And now we can move, uh, Matteo, if you'd like to introduce uh, the next single vineyard. Of course. So let's uh, move to La Serra. So La Serra uh, represents for us uh, the last single vineyard we, we introduced in our, in our range. And also the smallest one. I mean, we, I personally, um, with Martina, we are very, very, very happy to, to, to have the possibility, the opportunity to work with a great vineyard as La Serra is. La Serra is located in the higher side of uh, La Morra, just at the border, up to Brunate and Cerecchio. Uh, it's uh, like a um, uh, a magic side for, for Barolo, um, because the altitude is uh, extremely balanced by the soil that is very sandy, a little bit calcareous, this position southeast, and also a serra, as you can see in, uh, very well in, in the picture, as the hill of uh, uh, La Morra, just up to the linea, the repair from the wind. So if we compare Gallinotto and La Serra, are both altitude, more or less the same altitude, but, but Gallinotto is a southeast, southwest position, very open and windy. La Serra is southeast, is very, very protected. Uh, the age of the plant of the vineyard is uh, um, around 40 years. And uh, we started to make La Serra the first year in 2010. Okay. So La Serra uh, is, uh, what, what I really like about La Serra is the personality of La Serra. La Serra is a kind of wine that made of vineyard that makes wine with a lot of tension, very great complexity, a lot of uh, spicy notes or cinnamon, um, herb not uh, so as so this kind of uh, characteristic that really really get the identity to the one and this is uh, this is very important for us and when we started to make La Serra we tasted uh, many many other La Serra in all the, the, the La Serra also from other producer we recognize this style so it's a vineyard that has a very very strong identity this is very important for me so let's uh, let's uh, taste uh, together. What do you think, uh, Josh? Absolutely, yeah. And and I have to tell you, Matteo, it would it would be hard pressed. I would be hard pressed to tell you that I have a favorite wine that you make. But at this particular moment, it might be La Serra. So. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also La Serra is uh, the smallest uh, uh, vineyard for us. So we make uh, only 2,700 bottles, uh, zero for hectare. So it's a micro, micro vinification, a micro collection. Okay. Um, I can confirm right away uh, what you were talking about on the nose, this, this kind of herbal quality, this gent gentle mintiness, cinnamon, a little bit of spice, a little nutmeg. Here, um, you can feel that we've, we've moved back up to the high elevation, the big kind of fruity nose that was present in Luciani, I don't feel at all in this wine. I feel uh, much more restrained in terms of fruit. Yeah, on the palate, um, when when you talk about tension, uh, that's that that kind of that balance of the ingredients between fruit, tannin, acidity. Um, La Serra for me has. A, a different kind of tannin so far than the other wines. And you're, you're really feeling that on the palate, that, that sense of tension, that sense of the wine is kind of walking a tight rope. And this, this personality that it has is so unique, even within your portfolio, even within the wines that, that you make, you, you can really feel that it's something different, that it's, that it's standing out in some way. Um, yeah, that is delicious. What, what are some of your, uh, your thoughts, Matteo? Yeah, I, I like of La Serra also, also this characteristic. I mean, uh, uh, I like La Serra because it's a, it's a vineyard that makes wine with a lot of character. 
I mean, as a, as a, is a very strong identity and uh, is a very great tension uh, and uh, and a lot of complexity. Honestly, I mean, it's, it's quite uh, yeah. It's, it's also a little bit uh, like sensual. I mean, this this smell now gets a lot of uh, uh, interest in in, 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 a, in a personal taste because it's, it's changing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolution, you know. When, when you take yeah. It. So I, I think. I think it's a high, it's a hallmark though of, of all of your wines that you have this, this, this really, really, um, they're extremely aromatic, you know, so you have these, there's a certain sensuality, if I may say, if I may steal that word for you in, in all of these wines that are, um, you know, inviting you into the glass. <laughs> so, but certainly, certainly La Serra so far um, has been more than invited. So. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Um, that brings us, uh, Martina, to the next Barolo, if you would like to, to take it away. Yeah, sure. So uh, let's move to Barolo Conca. So uh, Conca for us uh, is, uh, is our flagship Barolo. So it's really the wine of our <laughs> heart. Uh, the main reason is basically because uh, it was the first wine that my father Mauro started to make in 1982. Not only is also the reason why our grandfather in the early 50s bought the property. So that proves also how important this single vineyard was already in the past. Um, and um, so as you can see from, from the picture, Conca have this beautiful shape. So it's a shape as a conch, as an amphitheater. And uh, it's where it really begins the magical, no? So because uh, this, uh, this particular form tend to keep uh, much more warm inside. So the microclimate in Conca is quite warm, uh, but mixed with the uh, soil of La Morra makes a wine that uh, is really, um, is really uh, a, a perfect uh, um, wine between complexity and elegance. So it's just a great mix. Um, this is one of these, the smallest single vineyard that we have. So we own uh, just uh, less than 0 0.5 hectares. So out of that, we make about 3,000 bottles per year. So again, we are talking about really a, a niche, a very, very small vineyard. Um, and um, the vinification actually is the same as La Serra. So this wine is aged for 18 months uh, in used barrique and just 10% new barrels. Um, so actually, uh, Conca to me is uh, have always something different from, uh, from the others. So really stands out from the others. And I guess also in 2018 is, is the same, same case. So in fact, uh, to me also the aromaticity is completely different and diverse compared to La Serra, Bricolciani and Gallinotto. Um, but uh, I'm very curious to know what's, uh, what is your feeling about, uh, about Conca at this stage? Yeah, the, um, the, the first impression of this wine when I taste it and when I smell it is a word comes to mind in Italian, which is signorile. So there's, this, well, there's something noble about this wine. It's, it's really a gentleman at the table and you, you, you can feel that. Um, before I get more into the tasting, I, I want to uh, just underline the fact that the vinification, vinification of La Serra and Conca are the same and the personalities of the wines are so different. And, you know, it, when, it, for those of you watching at home or at work, if you do have the opportunity to taste the wines together, I think that really tells you a, a big, important story because the way Matteo is working in the cellar is identical for the wines. It's really the, the beauty of the sights that, that speak. So what Conca has for me is this combination of all the things that we like from La Morese Barolo. So elegance and power. So this big floral nose, this elegant spice on, on the palate, assertive, but not aggressive tannin. And so that's, that's something that's also something I'm associating more and more with this vintage as I continue to taste 18. I'm so struck by how the tannin is present, but it's not uh, taking over. And it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> Thanks, and uh, I like the, the, I mean, the adjective signorile that you use because it perfectly <laughs> defined this, this wine, I think. So it's, a, yeah. it's really conca, how, how conca I mean, looks like. Yeah, it's, a, it's like yeah. a gentleman or the king. People talk about Barolo being the wine of kings and, and you know, this, this particular wine really embodies that, that kind of attitude, kind of very distinguished, very, very polite. Uh, <laughs> so. 
Um, as we're as we're tasting and and um, and talking, uh, Matteo, I, I want to ask you just just a question spontaneously. I know something that's very important to your customer base um, is sustainability. And so, if we're talking about vineyard practices in general, but since we're here tasting now, Conca and it's outside, what are you doing in general um, with regard to sustainability, and, and how does that affect uh, your practices in the vineyard and eventual wines? Yeah, so sustainability is, is very important for us, not uh, from now, because uh, our father Mauro is an agronomist, first uh, of, uh, of uh, all, and uh, he did agronomist for uh, part of his career. And um, I mean, it is, it's important since uh, many, many years, since the beginning of the sustainability, also because we live in this area. So we live where, where we have the vineyard and where we do the wine. Um, so we, we don't use uh, any herbicide and we reduce drastically the, the, the the chemistry product in, uh, in the vineyard. Um, and also uh, another aspect that is extremely important for us, uh, of, course, of course, we do the sexual confusion in, uh, in the vineyard. That is also very, very important, a great practice to, to do with a fantastic result too. Um, but uh, what uh, uh, for, for us is, uh, is becoming more and more important to working in the vineyard is also to try to balance the ecosystem. I mean, uh, try to get uh, more biodiversity in the vineyard and try to maintain all the water that arrive from the sky. This is very important because uh, the summer, especially in this area and many, many parts of the world is becoming more and more dry. So it's, uh, it's uh, many years that uh, we do uh, cover crop. So we sowing earth. Um, different variety of, uh, of grass in, uh, in the vineyard. And we normally don't cut during all the, um, all the summer, just to maintain all the water that arrives from the sky and uh, keep a lower temperature of the soil. It is very, very important for the maturation of the grain. So working in the vineyard is becoming is, is still and was 90% of our work, but it is becoming more and more important every year. So, and uh, we need uh, to, to work more in the vineyard, just to, to, to see what happened with, with the climate and uh, work a lot manually in the vineyard. This is extremely important. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matteo. It's really interesting, um, you know, to hear, hear from your perspective because uh, you're you're living this, you know. You're you're in the vineyard uh, doing these things, and uh, yeah, it's so interesting in it how short time, you know, thanks thanks to climate change or however you want to put it, the way that you're working has has changed so much. We could say that it's inspired uh, a different a different way of working than people did uh, years ago in the vineyard. Then. Yeah, thank you for the insight to that. So. Yeah, it's, it's totally it's totally different the approach because the the, the approach now is uh, is uh, the idea of working in the vineyard is see what happens day by day because if uh, for example the, the summer is very very hot we have to protect the grape and keep all the vegetation on on uh, on, on the vines. If the, maybe the, the climate is changing and the end of the summer is becoming much more humid, we have to uh, go to the vineyard and uh, get uh, more aeration around the grape. So it is, is something that uh, we cannot program in advance how, how it uh, was uh, in the past, but we have to check day by day and step by step. This uh, is, is, is very important. I mean, work in the vineyard is becoming and becoming more, more, and more, and more important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the insight. Um, <laughs> if we want to, if we want to summarize the 2018 vintage, um, that that word purity certainly does it. Um, there was, you know, the wines have an amazing amount of freshness. Again, I'm struck. I'm struck by the tannin um, because it's quite unique. Um, and delicious wines that certainly have a really long life ahead with, of them. And I just want to thank you again, Matteo Martina, for the opportunity to taste them. Uh, it was very, very enjoyable. Well, thank you to you, Josh. So it's, it's been uh, really great uh, to, to have you and thanks for leading us to, through this tasting. So it's, uh, it's very important. But now I have a question for you. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, 
I would like to ask you which kind of food you will pair with uh, with uh, a Barolo, our Barolo, and which which Barolo you will pair with the food as well. So it's uh, this is I'm I'm very sure that uh, a lot of the of the audience would like to, to know which uh, which food goes well with Barolo. So if you have any advice from Villa La Madonna, please share. Sure. With you. you know, there's a, there's a lot of options when you're talking about these wines with food, but. Um, for me, it's also important uh, the time of year. So here we are in January in Piemonte, and uh, I think maybe I would have a bottle of conca. And uh, um, particularly with this cold weather, we, there's a dish that we do uh, at Villa La Madonna that is very, very simple, um, very Piemontese, but something that can be reproduced all over the world. It's a stracotto di vitello. So it's a sim simply a veal or, or beef that's been slow cooked, uh, sort of braised. You can use wine or broth. At the hotel, we use both, um, uh, and then it's served very simply with or roasted potatoes or uh, polenta. So it's a it's a rich, hearty uh, dish. It takes a very long time to cook, can be like five or six hours. And why would I want a wine like Barolo Conca? Because when you have this kind of rich, slow cooked, slightly fatty piece of meat, the acidity, the tan, and the Conca kind of refreshes my palate, kind of cleans it inviting me to eat another another fork roll, which is you know that's the ultimate goal this time of year is, is to eat as much as you can and stay warm at least that's for me um it's a very traditional pairing but it's something that's tried and true so that that would be for me uh this time of year maybe something i would really like but these these wines are great with so many foods um also you know we have a very rich tradition of cheeses here in piemonte uh, one very well-known cheese castelmagno a little piece of castelmagno with a, a wine like the any of them really, but singling out the conca in particular, again, uh, kind of the, the rich, creamy texture of the cheese, the acid, just cutting right through that really beautiful. Um, but then you could replicate that pairing with a number of kind of aged or blue cheeses, kind of stronger body cheeses uh, from all over the world. So that would be uh, my answer for, uh, for, for now. Wow. <laughs> and, and now here in Italy is almost time for dinner, so you make me want to eat. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe you'll come home to find some stracotto um, on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Martina, Matteo, thank you again for sharing your wines with me. Uh, I think we will transition now. We have gotten some questions um, that have come up during the talk. If that's okay for you, I'll start to ask you them. Um, I don't know who would like to respond, but the, the first is a two-part question. And the question is, uh, with regard to conca, which we were just speaking about, how many bottles do you produce in total? So actually in conca is our average 3,000 bottle, and actually this year is a 3,068 bottle in 2018. You, you can find the number on the label. It's uh, okay. it can be interesting. The second, the second part of the question is um, the toast, the toast of the barrels. What kind of toasting does the barrels have? Do the barrels have? La tostatura de barrique. Uh, so we, we we use for our big barrel uh, not toasted uh, wood. For the small barrique, uh, we use uh, or not toasted or very light uh, toasted wood. So we don't like to have a high toasted uh, high extraction uh, barrique. Okay, thank you very much, Matteo. Uh, our next question this evening comes from David Sawyer. Um, and David asks, uh, so would you say that you achieved an optimal ripeness of the fruit in 2018, a perfect balance between sugar, acid, and phenolics? Um, so that's the first part of the question, then I have a second part of you. So is, is the, is, do you think it was optimal ripeness, perfect balance? Yeah, it was, it was a, a very, very, very good ripeness um, in a fresh way. Okay, so we're, we're talking about a uh, quite good uh, alcohol amount in, uh, in, uh, in 18, but uh, really the, the freshness of the grape, I mean, the, the, the primary fruit, fruit uh, and, um, and the fresh in the mouth of, of the grape really characterized the vintage for me. So yeah, the, 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 the maturation was in a, in, a, in a very good balance, but in a fresh way. Okay, and then the next question uh, from David is, do you feel that the cool vintage carries across to all communes of Barolo? So uh, as we classify 2018 as a slightly cooler vintage, is that true also in Monforte and Serralunga in, in everywhere or is that unique to La Mora? Yeah, so I, I think it's, it's a cool climate vintage overall. So I'm, I'm, as I said before, though, I think that the, the, the La Morrese Barolos probably really took advantage of that because they are even more gentle and elegant. 
Um, interesting to know. Uh, going forward, we have oh, some uh, we have uh, Lucy uh, saying I can't wait to open my bottle this weekend. Uh, we have a hello from Boston. Thank you for the food and wine, Karen. And another question. Oh, this is an interesting question. If Boston needs more Barolo Classico, can you give us some more from New York, perhaps? That's not a fair question. <laughs> don't, answer, don't answer that question. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, next, next question. <laughs> uh, we have a question from uh, Bernard. Bernard says, I, I thought that the classic Barolo was aged in French oak barriques, but Martina said it was aged for 18 months in used big barrels. What size exactly are the barrels and from where is the wood? French oak? Yeah, the wood is 100% French, uh, French. We only use French, French wood, but uh, Big barrels, big barrels means between uh, 25 hectoliters to um, 50 hectoliters. And uh, yeah, our, our, our use it, not too old, but we normally um, change a big barrel every 12, 13 years. Okay. Um, so it, apparently New York wants to hang on to its bottle, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll wait and see if we have a few more questions. Um, but in the meantime, um, Matteo and Martina, I just want to thank you both. The wines are absolutely gorgeous. Um, very, very, very elegant. Uh, it was a, a true, honest pleasure to taste them with you this evening. So thank you so much um, for the invite. Thanks for having me. And in, unless we get uh, oh some similar sentiments from uh, other American uh, <laughs> So, and unless we get other questions, um, I, I will say good evening and, and just thank you very much. But if another question does come up, um, you'll see me again. So uh, I'll hand it over to you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank, thanks Gracias. a lot. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Gracias. Josh. Gracias. It's, it's been a pleasure. And I want to say also thanks to, to everyone that have joined us tonight. So it's, uh, it's really a, pride, a pleasure to have shared uh, with you, I mean, the, the new vintage. This is very important to us. And uh, we can't wait to, to see you again, uh, have you here in Piemonte or, or wherever, and to, to see finally again after these uh, three years. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thanks, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure. And thanks for your time. Grazie a tutti. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye, everybody. Grazie. Ciao. 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 ciao.